Now, there is a complication that we should talk about. Suppose that we had 0.1 molar nitric acid, and we have 0.2 molar potassium acetate. Would that be a buffer? No, it's conjugate. Yeah. Now this is more tricky. What reaction would happen here? The NO3 NH NO3 minus Tate NH plus. Yeah. Who is this going to react with? Water. Uh, it form H2O with the um, KOH. Wait, are you? What are we doing? Are we just? Are we titrating it? So what we're asking is, suppose that we have a system that starts with 0.1 molar nitric acid and 0.2 molar potassium acetate. We want to know whether that could be a buffer. Um, well, at first it doesn't seem like it because this strong is strong. Base, and so. Yeah, this so is a strong acid and um, a weak conjugate and a weak base. But the story is more complicated than that. Let's say you were trying to figure out the pH here. Potassium acetate. Right. So this is not the conjugate of this. Now, um, what would be the reaction? What would? How would you find the pH here? How would you find the pH of the system? What chemical uh, reaction is happening? Wait, find the pH of the system. Of this system of these two things in the same flask. What chemical reaction would be happening there? Um, it'd be the formation of H two O and K. Uh, what, th what things would be reacting on the left? H so three and potassium acetate. That's good. Yeah. It's not going to just react with the water because it would refer to prefer no, to react with the base. That's right. Good. So we're going to make the potassium and with the potassium acetate, and this is going to react to form. What's it going to form? I never know. Uh, H two O. I don't see any way this could make H two O. Oh, sorry, my bad. Um, it'd be it form. KNO3 and uh, CH3COO Yeah, this is an acid. It's going to give a proton. And who's it going to give the proton to? The acetate. And then these would be the remaining spectator ions over here. Now so we're starting. KNO3 is a conjugate um, at base. Wait. Acid. KNO3 is a conjugate acid? Or no? um, well, we would say. Or, uh, uh, you would say that nitrate is the conjugate base of nitric acid. Yeah. And we already knew that acetic acid is the conjugate acid of acetate. Okay. The sodium, uh, so the, uh, yeah, and potassium here is best to just think of as like a spectator ion. It's just a spectator ion, it's not really doing anything. So this is the reaction. Now, is this reaction going to go to equilibrium or to completion? Uh, HNO3 is not it's strong. strong. It is a strong. It is so a strong acid. So it will go to completion. So what will be the change in the nitric acid? My, my one. One more. And what will be the increase in the acetic acid? One oh, and I should have put this in. We were starting with 0.2 molar of this. Yeah. Oh, and we're starting with no, none of this. Yeah. So how, what will be the change in this? Now, actually, the key is X is used for reactions that go to equilibrium. But this oh, reaction is going to completion. So minus, there only has to be one thing that's strong for the reaction to so go to completion. So it's minus 0.1. Good. Not minus 0.2. Yeah. But minus 0.1, because that's as much nitric acid as we have. And what will be the change in the acetic acid? Uh, plus plus 0.1. 1. Right. So what will be our final concentrations? Zero. Now, is this a good buffer solution? I don't, I don't know. How do you know? Well, the same way we figured out before, we have 0.1 molar of acetate and 0.1 molar of acetic acid. Is that a good buffer solution? So, what is a good buffer solution? equal amount of a strong base. It's not a strong base. Is it KH, KCH? No. Is it potassium acetate strong? 
Yeah, I guess we should have clarified that. So, um, so first of all, uh, here we have acetic acid. Is acetic acid strong or weak? Weak. We know that because this is our list of the strong acids. Now, this is the conjugate of acetic acid, right? Weak. So it has to be weak. We talked about that last time. If you have an absolutely weak acid, it has to have an absolutely weak conjugate base. So this is the buffer. In fact, that was this is the one we picked, right? We picked choice B. This is choice B, isn't it? It is. We've just made choice B. So this is why buffer problems are harder than they seem. This did not start as a good buffer, but it's a good way to make a buffer. So you can't, that, this is why people get confused and they think that buffers consist of strong acids. Buffers don't consist of strong acids, but that you can use a strong acid to make a buffer, the way we did it here. So we need to talk about this a little so we can be clear. So what does a buffer consist of? A buffer consists of a weak acid and its weak conjugate base, can which you can equip, I'm sorry? Can it also be a weak base and its conjugate acid? Now, do you understand why that is identical to what yeah. I just said? So we shouldn't say it also consists of that. We should it's, say it's that those are two way ways of describing the same exact thing. Because it's, it's, it's just in a different direction. Yeah. No different direction. The They're thing. just two ways of describing the same exact thing. Uh, how is it? I don't get how it's seen. Well, um, so, uh, well, let's see. So what do we have here? Um, we have a weak acid, mm -hmm. and we have its weak conjugate base. Isn't that identical to saying that we have a weak base and it's weak conjugate acid? It's like saying, it's like saying that, um, let's see, we would say here, Bob and Al. So let's say that we could say that the room consists of Bob and Bob's brother, or Al and Al's brother. It's yeah. two ways of describing the same exact thing. Okay. So oh, a buffer consists of a weak acid and its weak conjugate base, which is identical to saying that it consists of a weak base and its weak conjugate acid. However, um, there are, uh, there are uh, ways that you can make uh, buffers with strong acids, and we can see how it, that works. You have half the amount. Yeah, although it doesn't have to be exactly half, although that's, that makes the best amount, because yeah. the buffer doesn't have to have exactly equal. So the key point here is, at first, this was not a buffer solution, because we had only the weak base and no, none of its weak conjugate. However, the reaction with the strong acid made some of the weak conjugate, so that we ended up with some of each. Okay. okay. By the way, which of the cases from the handout did we just go through? Or, all right, so now how would we find the pH? We might as well finish this off and say, so what would be the pH of uh, putting these things together? 10 to the power of, no, no yeah, it's uh, negative log of the, oh, never mind. Let's say that the Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Did you do the Hassel? So, yeah, there's a Hassel that. Hassel. Right. How do we know that we can use the Henderson-Hasselbach? Because we've got a buffer. We yeah. use the Henderson-Hasselbach for buffer solutions when you have a weak acid and its weak conjugate. So we have pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. How would we find out the pKa? Uh, negative log of K. And that was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And what's going to happen over here? How does this equation simplify? Um, it's negative log of just 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, which is 4.7. Right. So did you see that this term would be 0? Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK because the log of 1 is 0. So this would be 4.7. By the way, all, what we're just seeing here is what you might have already learned. When you have a buffer with equal amounts of acid and base, the pH is the pKa. Yeah. If you have a buffer with equal amounts of acid and base, this term will drop out, and the pH will be the pKa. So all we have to do here is find the pKa. Now, that's only for this special case. pKa and pH are not usually the same thing, just for this special case. Um, so if you, do you have a handout for acids and bases? which? Which case did we just learn how to do? Um, we started with this stuff. Strong um, acid. We just we did um, strong acid weak base. Yeah. yeah, a strong acid plus a weak base, and which we didn't get to last oh, time. Equal equal amounts. Amounts. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we had equal amounts. We had less of the strong acid than the oh. weak base. That gave us equal amounts of the weak acid of the weak base and its conjugate, but those are yeah. two different things. So we just figured out what to do with a strong acid and a weak base if you've added less base 
then it's conjugate. So you might want to put in your tutoring notes that this is the example for that, uh, the example right here. Notice that as usual, there's two steps because we're underneath the thick line. First, we have to show the acid and base reacting with each other, and then that puts us into one of the situations above the thick line, which is a weak acid and its weak conjugate, the buffer solution. And for that, we did the henderson hasselbach equation. Okay, so a buffer consists of a weak acid and its weak conjugate. So it doesn't consist of a strong acid or a strong base, but you can use strong acids and strong bases to make buffers. So it's a kind of complicated thing, and we can see why people get confused. Okay, but um, none of these choices here would make a buffer system. Um, none of them match what I have here on the board, so we were right the first time when we said the right answer was choice B. Um, so you can see it's important to be able to identify whether something is weak or strong. They're expecting you to know here that nitric acid is strong and acetic acid is weak, so you need to memorize the strong acids to be able to do that. Some, some classes, they give you the strong acids, but I didn't see that on this test. 